commentator is Fulton Lewis, Jr. Braving and fighting through the troubled waters of the North Sea off the coast of Norway, British land, sea, and air forces approached the Nazi-held islands of Vagso and Malloy, sheltered outposts for the Germans, ports of call for their transports to take supplies to the Arctic Russian front. Their bows digging into the mountainous seas, the British warships forge ever ahead. Below decks, Britain's trained commandos make ready for daring action. They know that a dangerous job lies ahead. Officers map last-minute details for the devastating assault, while others keep watch as dusk approaches. As the curtain of night falls over the grim scene, prearranged signals are flashed with complete understanding for unified action. Little do the German conquerors realize that Britain's commandos are coming, coming to wipe them out. As they approach the Nazi-dominated coast, these daredevils eagerly await the signal that will set them in furious motion. Every movement is timed to a split second. The final signal is given. The men move to their post, and through the black night, powerful batteries trained on enemy shore defenses shatter the stillness of the Arctic. Very lights flash the welcome signal, cease firing. Completely caught by surprise, there are no return volleys from shore. Britain's naval gunners have silenced the Nazi guns. Advance guards, daredevils all, silhouetted against the fire of burning buildings, pave the way for their comrades to follow. Communication wires are strung, ammunition is safely cached, explosives are hidden in strategic places. Everything is made ready for the landing and for the serious business that lies ahead. The RAF lays down a smoke screen to shield the approaching assault boats from enemy machine gun fire. The commandos land with grim determination to wipe out every vestige of German and whistling occupancy in the islands of Vagso and Malloy. Cameramen follow, risking their lives to record this amazing film document for all posterity. As the surprise Nazis retreat, bullets whistle through the air and flames turn buildings into white-hot furnaces, destroying everything and everyone within their walls. The main objectives of the invading commandos are Nazi ammunition stores protected by enemy machine gun nests. Now the sappers lay down more wires with dynamite on the business end. The sappers move on, more quick jobs to be done, more Nazi storehouses to be demolished. This German gun will never bark again. It's one of scores that fall before the might of the British Blitz. The wires light up the islands like monstrous torches. The devastation is beyond belief. There go the oil tanks, valuable to the Nazis for refueling shipping that now will never set sail again. More oil, gasoline, and the commandos know what to do, over the side and down to the bottom.
In the center of town, the Nazis made a last stand to protect their headquarters, but all in vain. The commandos overwhelmed them. Assault boats are abandoned as reinforcements come ashore. More commandos to carry on the winning fight already at its height. There's no time to care for casualties except their own. On both islands, complete destruction of military objectives is the achievement of the day. The commandos quickly master every objective. News is flashed to the warships. They move slowly, daringly through narrow waters to take up new battle positions. 16,000 tons of shipping, slated for the Russian front, is blasted from the bay. German airplanes take to the air. Guns from the British ships in the harbor bring one down. Nazi headquarters is the target for these blasting mortars. And still they come, and still they fight. The Nazi commander falls. Quislings carry his torn body to the boats. Two raids and two Nazi garrisons are captured in less than 10 hours. Take no pictures, reads the sign, but the victorious invaders take and give everything. In this raid, the British have two great objectives, to hearten the Norwegian people and to destroy Nazi shipping. The whole attack is an example of masterfully coordinated action between the commandos, the British Navy, and the RAF. The raid parties started to land at 8.30 in the morning, and by 3 o'clock the same day, they were on their way back home. Their mission accomplished, their victory won. Their timetable was rigorously kept. Back to the waterfront they march, back to the staunch assault boats that brought them to land, back with their wounded comrades. War strategists term this assault the model of its kind, and well they may. German prisoners are herded aboard British warships, glad to be rid of fear and uncertainty, while their homes and barracks are still ablaze from the commando's fury. On they come, more Tommies, more prisoners, and with them a mixture of Nazis and Quislings. Amid this havoc, hundreds of Norwegians eagerly join the British as friends. Friends willing and anxious to take up arms against their defeated conquerors. More prisoners and gone are the promises of their Vera. Gone are their hopes for victory. Completely surprised and trapped, they surrender their all. Offshore, warships load their strange human cargo, while Norwegian pilots stand by the British navigators on the bridge ready and eager to help negotiate the perilous channel. As the ships are filled, anchors are weighed, and last preparations are made to sail away to home waters. More commandos reach the port, and with them more prisoners, the soldiers headed for Blighty, the Nazis for concentration camps. Trip after trip is made to bring all aboard. Commandos, loyal Norwegians, Nazis and their quizzling followers. As all look back to shore, the telltale fires blaze a victory message that never can be told or written. Victory with a capital V, and one that will be recorded indelibly in all history. The intrepid bagpiper who led the commandos in battle now leads them in a dance of joy. It's a well-earned diversion they seek. A deck of cards in a friendly game, a restful sleep, or a trip to the barber. Hail to the commandos, brave, happy, victorious men. With them, it's thumbs up and well-earned.